Yeah. 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 Ye
And what about just regular work vans, work vans that don't have ladders hanging on them? As long as there's no, as long as they meet the weight requirements and there's no overhanging <coughs> ladders from beyond the bumper, right. the front and rear bumper, then we don't have an issue with them. But I'm concerned too because like I said, there are certain towns that do not allow commercial vehicles to be parked on their streets and they're bringing them here into town and just leaving them. Correct. So that's something that I wanted to... Well, it sounds like there's an ordinance, though. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it sounds has like to be you... oversized, though. I'm talking about trucks yeah. that are not <coughs> oversized. So, so, like I said... So you mean any commercial vehicle? So what's... I know, once again, I'm, I'm asking these questions so that we can... Sure. Can more so what's the... What, what makes it a, what makes it have to be commercially registered? Um, what happens is, is weight comes into play. It's over eight thousand pounds, I believe, is the number. Um, I can get you the exact uh, statute if you want. If you want. So do we ban any commercial no. vehicles? No, not now. No. Okay, so yes, so we're so. different than the well, that and I think that's council president's question, right? Yeah. Which is, you know, we only ban commercial vehicles over ten thousand pounds. Why can't we make it any commercial vehicle? So I think that's right, right? That's the question. Yeah, just, yeah. I'm, I'm not looking to hurt uh, sure. people that live here in Long Bridge and for, you know, um, I, I just don't think that we right. should be the um, yard for sure. vehicles that don't belong here. They, the businesses are not here, so right. they're, you know, no one owns them, they're just leaving them here. Right, right. And I'm finding that's happening quite a bit. And in those cases, like I said, um, when we get those calls, we go out and we address them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we issue the summons, we move them along, we get them out of here, and we let them know. A lot of times we try to give, you know, we obviously we try to give a break in the beginning. We don't want to just come off and just start, right. you know, unless we really have to. But we document what vehicle it is, who the driver is, and everything with that. And we list it in our, <coughs> in our systems so that we know if we deal with them again, they were already warned once. So then we go ahead and we issue the summons. We try to be, you know, courteous to them because their business is trying to just do their thing. Um, but at the same token, we also have to address the fact that residents can't see where they're going. They don't create accidents and they're, they're a problem. So as we deal with them, we've always dealt with them case-to-case -case basis. As someone called or we see the issue as we're patrolling the streets, then we deal with them accordingly. But like I said, there are ordinance, ordinances in place that we use to, to address those issues, especially like trailers unattached to a vehicle, mm -hmm. things like that. Or if you have like large oversized vehicles that are parked overnight or park blocking an intersection, regardless of the hour, we still address them. We, we move them along, we tell them, hey, you, you can't do this. We understand you have a business thing. We try to even work with the business owners to try to come up with some better solutions of where they can have a drop off. Maybe they can bring the forklift pallet from down the street up to where to where the business is to avoid accidents and, and traffic issues. So, but like I said, case to case basis, as we deal with them, we, we, we go out and we, uh, we deal with them right then and there. Is it possible to um, have citizens register their vehicles and they get a sticker so we know that they belong here and I mean I, I'm just I don't thinking. think I think that if you ban commercial vehicles on city streets you can't say it's only private town residents mm -hmm. they're public streets we would have to prove so the answer the answer is well no no you could pass an ordinance and you could say no commercial vehicle parking overnight on a public street but you can't allow somebody who's a long range resident to do it uh, and that's the problem that you have. You can't, you have to ban, if you ban it, you ban it. And what's happening is that there's other towns that have banned it and now people are bringing their vehicles here. But what's happening is that the Long Branch worker who works here is bringing the vehicle home as opposed to the one that works in Wall Township. So, but what you can't do is say, well, because if it's a traffic safety issue for a commercial vehicle to be on a residential street overnight, then it's a traffic safety issue with a Long Branch resident or a not Long so I don't think that you can have permanent parking that allows some commercial vehicles and not other commercial vehicles. You'd have to, you know. Either ban it or. Correct, correct. And that would mean that, you know, somebody who, and, and by the way, maybe that makes sense. Maybe people shouldn't take home their work trucks and park them on residential streets in, in the city. Maybe, you know, because of the narrowness of the streets and for all of those reasons, maybe that's, that's the ultimate conclusion. Well, I've been talking to some people. They've been addressing the same issue. It's mm -hmm. a hot topic lately. And they said we have to, they're really pushing for us to ban them, the commercial vehicles. I know it's going to hurt a lot of people. But, you know, like for example, um, I have a brothers, a couple of brothers of mine that bring the work van. They would have to park in the driveway and put their, local, their car on the street. You know what I mean? So they have to find a way to put it, you know, in the driveway and put the cars in the street or something like that, you know? Yeah. 
that's what they would have to work with. It's, it's really getting a touchy point because a lot of residents we talk to around town are really getting fed up. It's a quality of life issue. Quality no, of life you're, issue. You're, absolutely, you're absolutely correct. But um, Cornwall, can you think of any other, so let's assume that, that council wanted to get rid of the weight limit and just say no commercial vehicles parked overnight on city streets. Is there some, I always ask, is there some unintended consequence mm -hmm. that we don't know about that is going to be an issue for us? I mean, just from experience dealing with going to those calls, I mean, most of them, you know, that we deal with, a lot, a lot of the residents here have construction jobs and they bring their construction trucks home only because it's easier and that's their means of transportation to and from work. So they need that commercial truck to get up 4 o'clock in the morning and just get out to reach to whatever job they're going to. I know that that could probably hurt them. Um, you know, and that's from experience. Anybody we've dealt with, like usually that I've dealt with out in the field, most of the people move them. They'll take them back to their construction company if it's an issue, if we have neighbors that are really upset about it. Uh, we we, we kind of tread delicately with them because we know there's a need for them to make money, but at the same token, there's also a need for safety and, and to be conscious about what's going on in the neighborhood with that type of vehicle there. You know, for safety and public, you know, it's, it's, it's like a double-edged sword. Uh, it's tough. So I know from experience going out there and dealing with uh, different commercial vehicles and, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's one of those things where some cases it's definitely, it's got to be moved. You know, in other cases, like, this is their livelihood and this is where they, they need that vehicle or they may not have a vehicle to, to go back and forth to work and that's what they use every day. Um, so it, it's, it's hard. You know, I, I, yeah. Well, like Councilman Gary said, you know, some people park, park on their own property yeah. and put the cars on the yeah. streets, which makes it, right. you know, right. not so uh, hazardous. Um, but like I said, there are people that will leave their cars <coughs> during the day, you know, and pick up the trucks on sure, the sure. streets, and then come back, get their cars, and leave the trucks there. Mm -hmm. And they don't belong here. Correct. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely an issue. And, yeah. you know, as we get more and more populated, I think it's, you know, it going to be a real, real bigger concern. So, right. so now that's, a, now that's a, a different issue, right? So we were talking about an ordinance that said no commercial vehicles parking overnight. Now you just, well, I guess a commercial vehicle would be here over. It would be overnight. Overnight. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Certainly that's a, so, I mean, we can move in that direction if, if, if you want. I don't know whether or not the department wants to propose some kind of stepped up enforcement that maybe we'll get the, to, to get it done without changing the ordinance. But we certainly can change the ordinance to do that. And you're going to have those, you're, you're, look, I, I think that you're probably correct. You're going to have those situations and maybe we'll deal with them as they come that people will come in and say, look, I don't, I, I, my guess is if you're going to have a couple. First, it's the, I don't have a driveway. So I can't, I, I would park it in the driveway, but I don't have a driveway. That's going to be the first one. The second one is going to be, I don't have another car. This is how I get back and forth to work. Um, so I think that those are the two circumstances, right, that you're probably going to, if people who are going to complain, that's what, they, that's what you're going to hear. So. The, the largest that we find is like, you'll see um, you know, flatbed tow trucks that come from other areas that maybe someone just gets in a job and they, bring the, they start bringing the tow truck home. We usually take it to them. They're not supposed to have that for weight reasons and because it's commercial overnight. Sure. We go into the, the, the ordinance for 325 and the issue of summons to them and make a move. Um, but the overnight trucks, I mean, <clears throat> businesses use different vendors and they switch them up without us knowing. So, we could have an 18 wheeler today that's parked on Long Ridge Avenue, but we don't even know where it came from, but it's, it belongs to something they ordered for a business, and then they could change vendors and then have a truck from somewhere else that comes in that doesn't know that we just already told this truck driver you can't park there, and we tell the businesses, hey, you can't have your truck parked out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they deal with so many different people that I think that becomes the issue. Well, I guess if we issued them tickets, it wouldn't matter. They'll get the message. They'll get the message. Yeah. 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 Oh, they'll get yeah. the message. Yeah, and we do issue no, but, but we have the ordinance, you know, no, no commercial uh, trucks, period. Yeah. Now, anywhere or just in a certain zones? Are we talking about residential zones or any place? I would think, well, here. No, uh, well, well, what if you have a about the street that has just businesses on it? Mm -hmm. Is that the ordinance? So, so it's 8,000 pounds, but it's right. a very <coughs> small number of streets that are specifically listed. Right. So I'm assuming it's permitted in other locations. Mm -hmm. Well, in a commercial setting, probably. So do you want it for the entire, so let's think about that. Do so you want it for the entire city? Because if there's a strictly commercial area, 
do you want to ban them also? I mean, uh, most of the business have parking spots. Parking spots. Park 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 you know what I mean? Okay. There, there is a limitation to the parking of commercial vehicles on residential property as well. There, that's a zoning limitation, right? Yes. Right. I, I thought, I thought, right. Well, how would you like to proceed? Why don't we do a do we I thought do we had commercial overnight forbidden. No. At least uptown. In some places, but there, apparently it's a weight limit, so it's only trucks over 8,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. give, give it, Corporal, give us an idea. What's what's over 8,000 pounds and what's not? Like a Ford F-150 is not over. Well, it, yeah, it's gross vehicle weight is what's tagged on the vehicle ticket. I mean, we can put anything in there, really. Yeah, no, but I'm saying there's gross vehicle weight. What, 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 I, I'm just trying to... I, a box yeah, truck is over 8,000 yeah. pounds. But so, it's so, so, like an 8,000 pound vehicle could be a van. You know, okay. that could be... So, Oh, yeah. there's most of the people um, have the construction companies. They know what the limits are. Mm -hmm. When they go to motor vehicles, they just stay underneath for the weight. Yeah. Right. When they register the vehicle. Right. So if you made it no. And even with those weights, they can still add, you know, thousand pound machines inside the back yeah. of them. So you're yeah. really over the weight anyway. We right. Don't have, we don't have balances we can bring out. To the yeah. Scale, yeah. yeah. Right. Is there any way we can research other communities who have initiated a ban? see what um, you know, what those results were, how it's working now, what some of the issues were, and so forth. I mean, I don't know, would that be something, would that be something we could find it, out it, about? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Let's, let's do our research and we'll put it on to the next one. Okay. But, but for now, you know, one of the takeaways is we can't change the ordinance, but right now there are ordinances. There's a zoning ordinance yeah. and there is a traffic ordinance. So if you see a box truck, you know, parked <coughs> overnight, call, they'll take it. Right now, they can take it back. Yeah. Uh, and a van that has, as the mayor's talked about this before, the ladders that extend past the bumper, those are those are all things that are currently under the current ordinance. So the police department could issue tickets for those right away. Okay. We'll leave it like that, man. Thank you so much. We'll definitely, you know, we can do a study on our end, too, to find out the trouble spots. So you kind of have an idea of what we're dealing with. Because there, are, like I said, I know right off the top of my head, just driving around, I know the areas where we tend to find the 18 wheelers parked there, and it's always an issue. And then we're constantly there issuing tickets, or even areas where we know that you know sometimes they're in and out quickly. And it doesn't really bother anything, but the businesses are happy because they're getting their deliveries, and you know. But uh, we're also concerned about safety, also. So if we can conduct a study on our end to find out what the hot spots are. That we can we can kind of bring that to you and we can see if that's something that maybe we want to address just those specific areas, or you know if you make it citywide, I think you're going to have the issue where you have uh, you know people that really rely upon that not being effect that's going to affect them. I think that's where we're at. Okay. Is there a separate issue of because you also have, to have I guess designated truck routes? Is there an issue with tractor trailers on residential streets, or do you have ordinances in place that protect well sufficient? If you have a moving truck that comes in, someone wants to move their house in, you know. No, that's a different. That's that's a, you're usually exempted, but right. if so, you know, you're seeing a residential street, so so is that an issue? Or if I, I, I'm well, there are certain streets to tell you exactly which streets they are, and there's there's four ton ratings for streets, for right? From weight limits, they, mm -hmm. trucks are not allowed to go down those streets. That's what I'm saying. So you do have those. Yeah. So there are some of those. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. So we'll if you allow us to conduct a study on our end, we can come back with some better information as far as what that goes. Uh, what, what do you think is reasonable is as far as the time? I mean, with that when you could come back? Um, like I said, I'm going to have to talk to my boss, and then we'll, 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 I'll sit down and speak with him and let him know what the concerns are here. Like I said, I'm filling in for them. Yeah. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, I took some notes here. I kind of know where your mindset is with this and what you're looking to do. I'll relay that to my boss and then he can relay that to the chief and then we can come up with something and we'll get this as fast as possible. Great. Right. Good. Thank you so much. No Thanks. Right. Okay. Now the next item is the, um, I asked for an update on the uh, website and the employee handbook. So Lindsay, you want to come on up and join the conversation? 
she's doing all the heavy lifting on these oh, projects. Yeah. Uh, but I did talk, I met with Lindsay yesterday, and we talked about the progress on the two items. Website, 95% uh, done, mm -hmm. is accurate. Uh, we're looking at a July 8th launch date. So it's right around the corner. Uh, what's holding us up right now is coordinating training sessions with um, basically four of our departments, just getting it lined up where the department rep, our IT people, and the vendor can all be available at the same time. Um, training's out well, mm -hmm. and yes. the people are being instructed on how to update their department's page. We want to take some of this, uh, the, the tedious work of updating phone numbers, staff names, and such off of our IT people. Um, we're not as to be you know, web designers, just to update some very basic information to keep it current. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting closer. Um, and again, July 8th, the one thing Lindsay uh, did inform me about is that everything won't be as, it, as we're, we want that to be as far as some of the data. Uh, we're transferring agendas and minutes. They may not all be in place, I'm sure you've all got on the websites that say certain items are under construction. Um, we'll have some notation that some things are still being worked on. But we don't want to wait until everything is perfect. We want to get this thing up and running, get people used to it. There one, was one item that we thought we needed your input uh, relatively quickly on, and you don't have to, to weigh in totally tonight. We give you time to, uh, to deliberate. But it was suggested that we change our website name. Uh, right now, we're visitlongranch.com. Uh, EvoGov thought it was more appropriate that we get a dot, dot .org to show that we're not a commercial website, that we are uh, you know, in, an organization. Um, and it's not .gov. We're going with .org, which is mm -hmm. probably more common, yes. I believe, under municipalities. Uh, the county's website, I noticed I went on to look because I've always looked them up as Visit Monmouth. You can put Visit Monmouth in. It automatically transfers over and I think it's co.monmouth.us.nj, which nobody's going to remember to put it in. Allbranch.org, we have the rights to it. Yes. And <laughs> so it's available. And what we can do, and the, the vendor has said it would be easy, is just like the county does. If someone still goes back to the old link, it'll automatically transfer over. That's how the county is working now. And we but, can basically do that forever. So any old marketing yeah. materials that we have that say visit longbranch.com, Always send them to longbranch.org if we change it. And our email addresses are longbranch.org, so yes. it's all going to be the yep. same. It'll be consistent, so I think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. And, and the other the other source of confusion, and I do find this when I look for other municipalities, is when you just put in the name of the town, you will often get a visit Belmar, visit another town, and visit Highlands, and it's a chamber of commerce or a commercial type of website. You go down, then you find the official website for the municipality. So we, we think it's better to get the right one so people know what to look for. So let us know if you're all in agreement now. Yeah, we'll proceed. I think I'd like to have a secret ballot. We'll have a secret <laughs> ballot. But if you're all in <laughs> everybody thinks that's a good idea. Yeah, yep. a good idea. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. We got something accomplished. <laughs> George, um, what did you say? Um, each department will be responsible for maintaining their own page? The, the, we will construct the pages. Right. But, for example, in, our, in ours, if we have something to go on to change a phone number, or if the building department lists their staff and they have a change of personnel, yeah. we want that updated. We don't want to put it all on our IT right. people to monitor all these different pages. We've got a lot. Yeah. We've got a lot going on. Um, so, if Jake's, so Jake's unit, if they have some change, his people will have the ability to go on and make changes, not in design, right. but in some of the content, content. informational content. Okay, but um, the departments, the individual departments, are, have the responsibility for keeping their pages updated within the, the yes. design line. Okay, yes. yep. all right, no, I just wanted to yep. Yep. Sounds okay. right? Yeah. Okay. George, if you don't mind, Lindsay, can you just uh, describe what the capabilities the website would be as opposed to what we had before mm -hmm. and the goal of, of, of why we get, we're doing this. Sure. So Let's talk about some of the features. So <laughs> visually, um, right Is that microphone on, by the way? It is. Hello? It's on. It, is it on? It's on. Oh, okay. 
So visually, right when you go onto the new website, um, there's a lot more pictures and um, a lot more images of around Long Branch. So immediately when you go to the new one, you just have a different feel. Um, for usage and how users are going to use it, it's, um, our goal is to make it easier to navigate. So we kind of condensed um, uh, at the top, I think we have a government tab, a departments tab, a contact us, and we kind of make it easier for people as soon as they get on the page to find exactly where they want to go. So navigating it is really important to us. Um, also when you scroll down um, to the bottom of the page, um, it has all of our social media. Um, the layout of the announcements is a lot easier to navigate through. Right now, as you know, our page, um, all the announcements are kind of just like right there on our page, and it's a little bit overwhelming at times. So um, that'll be easier as well. The calendar, hopefully, will be fully up and running by July 8th, but if not, that's another example of something that's going to be a work in progress where uh, Dana will be putting her events, um, will be putting the different meetings up there, um, and that hopefully will be a nice feature for residents too, that they're going to be able to go on there and see exactly um, you know, what is on each, each date. Will that include the uh, brush and the ball pickup dates yes. as well yep. on the calendar? So that it's very and then it also has the capability of more interactive features with yes. residents, right? Can you talk about so expanding be, upon that? Or? Yes, so there's going to be a contact us form where we're working on that right now where residents can go right to the contact form, um, put in their name, their, their last name, their email, <coughs> a drop down to pick the department exactly which one they're trying to reach. Um, and then kind of put in their concern. And that is going to be navigated to whoever the department head chooses. Uh, it can also go to multiple people in the department. So it can go to the department head and someone else that's designated to respond back to that person. Um, <coughs> but our goal is to have uh, something right at the top that's either going to say report a concern or contact us, but something that jumps out right away that if someone's going to our website with maybe a problem, they know right away they can click that and, and get in touch with someone. Is there a complaints database that goes to two, so if somebody's tracking, so the department gets a complaint about a pothole, that somebody knows that the department is reacting to that, so that you're, you know, then two weeks later the mayor doesn't get an mm -hmm. email that says, I, two weeks ago I said the public works as a pothole and I haven't heard from anybody. Is there, does, does that copy to somebody else? Is there, is there so a way there, that you're So there is a service that is available called 311, and Mr. Jackson and I have been kind of going back and forth about if we want to keep the 311 service or go back to the regular contact form that I just explained to you. Um, <coughs> so it's in between the two. We do have the possibility to have what you're talking about where we can go back and track the complaints. Um, but at this time, we've kind of been going back and forth if we want to use that right away or kind of have a more simpler version where people can just go right on, uh, pick the department they're trying to reach, put in a text box exactly what their issue is, it gets sent as an email, and then someone will respond back to them. The, the 311 requires an account or a password? Yeah, so the 311, when you, if, we, if we want the 311 option, um, you click on it, you have to make a username, you have to make a password, there's a lot more fields to fill in. Like I said, this is still an option that we could do, but discussing it with Mr. Jackson, as well as Will and Alex, um, and you know the collaborative effort of all of us, we kind of going back and forth, are people really going to make the username and password, or is their goal really that if they want to know um, what our bulk and brush schedule is, will they just more likely click on contact someone, I want someone to respond back to me and fill out those couple forms, or are they going to make the username, password, and go through all those other fields? Which, like I said, we can bring that on later, but to, for a launch date of July 8th, we may just have the contact form up for at this time and explore and other options. Right, so there are always one you can include pictures, it'll yeah. give you GPS <coughs> coordinates, but yes. You know, I, I think we're getting to the point where it's going to, it's going to create more work than problem solving. Right. I, you know, it's the old KISS theory. If we keep it simple, mm -hmm. I, I think we'll get more useful information from people. Personally, if I see I have to create an account, I move on. Yeah. Unless it's something I really need, right. I just don't want more passwords. Right. Anyway. I think most yeah. people, with these, they'll just, I think they'll go past. And I've, and I've also seen systems, and uh, I guess it's an SDL platform or portal, that if you're the, the that everybody's instructed, so you're, you're once again your public works, somebody writes, uh, you know, there's a broken curb in front of my house. The employee who gets that 
puts that into the system as a complaint. So it's so then the next employee goes and fixes it, puts in, got this complaint. Now they go into that complaint and they put in that they fixed it. So that when that resident calls up and says, "Are you ever going to come and fix it?" You or you or you or whoever the administrator is can look at it and say, "You called on this day, got fixed on that day. We, somebody went out. Here's who went out. You, you know, you, you kind of have a running track of all of it, um, especially when you're dealing with, you know, potholes are, are kind of easy, but sometimes you have you know, long-standing." issues in a neighborhood where somebody's calling them repeatedly and it's good to have a track of, you know, public works talk to them and engineering talk to them and I talk to them and Nick talk to them and George talk to them so you can see how, how a problem is handled. So that's a that's a next level, but that's not yeah. really a website issue. Yeah, but it's the responsibility of the employees sure. to enter to sure. enter the data, yeah. not not the person who Yeah, it's the way you track, it's yeah. like, it's yeah. way yeah. like tracking work orders. It's, it's like a right. work order. Right. Yeah, so that's the way you track. Yeah, good. But I mean, the whole idea is to make the website more user friendly, right. mm -hmm. to have these capabilities if we want them, mm -hmm. and to just uh, you know enable residents to uh, whatever their concerns are to, to, to be able to address hopefully right from their home. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how um, this is wonderful that this is happening. Are we gonna, um, how are we gonna announce it or make it aware to the public? You know, I mean, I don't know if there's a, a demonstration at a council meeting or, or <laughs> a launch party. Sounds good to me. No, but but something to, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's a nice accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, we, we have the signs around town. Um, you know, and I don't know how heavily traffic our website is. Um, I, the one thing I think is what, what, it'll be more navigable. Mm -hmm. It's going to be not as busy, mm -hmm. and that is the way government websites are going. Mm -hmm. They have far fewer categories across the top yeah. than when government websites first started popping up. Mm -hmm. um, they've condensed a lot of these into easier ways to find what you're looking for. And I can tell you, when you go on some sites, you'll find what you want. You go back to try to find it a week later, you can't remember how you got there. It's too confusing. I just did a quick look. On our homepage, we probably have 45 different choices just up and down yeah. the side. Um, they're random. You know, it's, yeah. it's in, I've seen other towns where they list everything. It's it's indefinite. It just yeah. runs. No, I mean, just something very brief. I don't know yeah. if, if at a, a I mean, I, I would assume we announce it at the council meeting. Council meeting. We'll put it on Facebook. Yeah, well, we'll put yeah. it on all our social media. We'll announce yep. at the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get, definitely get the yeah. word out. Mm -hmm. But it's a good, good point, I Anita, mean, it's a good point. Yeah. yeah. How do we yeah. get the word out and let them know about it? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's part of the whole thing. Yeah. And part of it will be the fact that we're changing the name, you know, the website as well. Right. We'll, we'll see that. Good. Okay. Great. Any other questions? No. The handbook? The handbook? I have Lindsay here with us again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know she's been working diligently on this. Oh, can, she's I, been, can I just say one more thing about yeah. the website? I do want to say thank you to Will and Alex for working so yeah. hard on this website. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy the end product, but they definitely, I know I'm here tonight, but they get a lot of kudos for it. And the vendors look pretty good? Done. Yep. yep. Sorry. Where, where is he? Denver? He's in Denver. Yeah. Okay. But it works. Yep. It works. Uh, the other is uh, the handbook. Um, as you know, this was a, a thing that we really need. And Lindsay's been working on it. She's been working with Lou. Uh, we have a few policies that we're tightening up. I, last night I read through some drug policies. I have one that I'll show you that I think I prefer. Um, we have a few others that we have to make some decisions on of what versions we feel would best fit for our workforce. But how far along do you think we are? Well, there's about four outstanding policies that I think one Lou and I are discussing and then the three that we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's around 70 pages right now and it's, you know, basically as close to complete as it as it can be right. um, just with those few outstanding policies that we're just discussing. Right. And, and before it's actually put in place, mm -hmm. we, uh, we will, and yeah, we've talked about it, share it with all of the unions. Though it says, you know, pretty clearly that it doesn't, doesn't um, override any contract. You know, Bill's familiar with this. You know, it's a, it's it fills in all of the other policies. But we always like to run it through them because it just it's it's easier rather than putting it in effect and then if they have questions going back and changing it. So we the, the last thing in the process will be when we're all done with that that we'll share it with all of the union heads, get some comments from them, and then, and then 
as well as all of you. Yes, yeah, as well as everybody here, and then and then ultimately it'll be circulated so all of the employees will have the sign that they got. Will there be like a workshop for the employees to go over some of the things that might be a little? Um, well, the union employees they'll work through their union. Okay. That you know we'll do it. Let them work through their shop stewards and work through it, and then uh, obviously and the other employees. I know we'll have discussions with our department heads. Um, I think we'll have to have some philosophical conversations mm -hmm. about how some of these apply, uh, some of the changes that are put in place. You know, not everybody's going to be happy with everything, rarely are we, but there's some things that we, we feel we've had many discussions that need to be brought up to speed. Um, so, so there have been policy changes? We don't have policies. No there are no policies. I thought, yeah. That, I, there I are no thought, policies. Okay. There are no policies. I thought I heard policy. Yeah. Policy. Well, the answer, is, the answer is there are no policies. Right. So, okay. so, so there are many things left up to interpretation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what the answer is is that in some respects, all of this is a policy change because there are no policies. So, okay. So there are some things, there's a couple of different categories. There are some policies that have been going on for years that will now become written policies and updated to what the current status of the law is. There's those. Okay. There are some where there simply have been never been a policy that they'll now be written policies. So that's the important part. And there may be some circumstances where there are changes of policies, yes. Practices. Pra practices yeah. and not policies. Yeah, practices. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Lou, if you don't mind or Lindsay or George, can you explain again, we haven't had a employee handbook and why that's critical and so I'll give you the first mm -hmm. first circumstance. So there's the New Jersey law against discrimination. Um, bans things like gender discrimination, sexual harassment in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You don't have a policy. The law essentially says that, they could, that, at, that as a, an employer, you have to have a policy and you have to follow it. You have to have a policy that establishes where a complaint is made. It has to have two areas, two places where you can make a complaint. Like it has to establish what's, you know, give a, uh, uh, employees an idea as to what's not per permitted conduct. So you don't have a written policy now. So if you get sued for harassment, defending the lawsuit becomes problematic because you don't even have a policy and there's nowhere for somebody. Now, it doesn't mean that over the years people haven't had complaints and they haven't made them to somebody and they've been handled, but you've never had a policy. You know, so all of those standard policies, you probably work for a public employer, you do too, that you see in, you know, they don't exist. They're, the, there's, the drug testing policy doesn't exist. The, you know, when you can use your vacation time, how you notify your phone, those kind of things don't exist. And the problem is, is that some of these things are covered for the union employees, they're covered in their, their contract, like who, you should call out sick who you should call out sick who, but for non-union employees, there is, a, there is a policy. So it's, you know, it's problematic when you go to discipline employees for being late five days in a row when there's not a policy on absenteeism, uh, policies on computer usage, policies on social media. I mean, it's 70 pages long. Yeah. <laughs> but but are, are you pretty much using the words policy and practices as interchangeable? Well, did, just so yeah. we know, George said practice, but it's yeah. not practice. Okay. What's happened now is because there's no written policies. All you have is, well, the last time this okay, happened, right. this is how we handled it. That's a practice. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have a policy. A policy okay. is something that is established. This is not. A, there's no such thing as a practice manual. Practice is, in the past, we always handled it this way, so we're going to continue to handle it that way. Mm -hmm. That's. Let me tell you what that is. Not a good practice. <laughs> That's what that is. So. You're supposed to have, these are all of these items are supposed to be written policies. Okay. So, and that's what that's what you should have. And there are, but there are some things, like your drug testing policy is the one that we've been talking about the most, that you don't have for anybody. There's an attorney general's policy for police officers, but you don't have one for anybody else. So you have a federal policy for CDL drivers, but you don't have any, you have safety sensitive employees here, and you have no drug testing policy. So you have to have those policies. Oh, George, I'm speaking to the union once we yeah. move it over. Uh, because there is no real policies in place, mm -hmm. the, the unions pretty much would have to understand that we're not violating the, you know, the contract and whatever is going on. So they have to respect the fact that this is the city's policy. Sure. Like we do with the county. The county comes out with a policy. If the 
it's not in violation of our, uh, like, for example, I come in late. So uh, my boss lets me uh, work through my lunch to make up that half hour or hour that I was late. Well, if my policy is if you're late, you use whatever time, uh, but you are not working through your lunch. Which right. basically means I'm going to come in late whenever I want to because I can sit at my desk right. and eat my lunch and, and work through. So our policy might say, you know, there's no come in late to use, what, use the appropriate time uh, of working through lunch. Go ahead. So, so that, and that's an interesting example. So that's something you could actually negotiate. But the adoption of a, you could negotiate in a union contract that if you're not 15 minutes late, you're not penalized, right? You, that you can negotiate. But the, the having a sexual harassment policy is a non-negotiable management prerogative. A union can't negotiate with a manager about whether or not we have a sexual harassment policy. So those are those kind of policies are our policies, right? They're, yeah. they're not in, you'll never find one of those in a in a in a um, in a collective bargaining agreement. You might find stuff about absenteeism and stuff. Uh, and generally, a lot of our contracts have some of that language in. It. But you have to, you, you know, I mean, you have to have these policies. It's you know, it's. You need a guy. It's 2019. Yeah. You, can't yeah. you just yeah. can't wing it and say, well, how did we do it last time? Because yeah. you may have been doing it totally wrong. The employees need a, a way to follow. Just like Lou said, uh, within the past week, got an inquiry from one of our insurance providers asking about a policy on how to report a certain type of incident. We don't have it. Mm -hmm. That's And the, the, the message was, if you provide that policy, it's, a, it's good for us to defend ourselves mm -hmm. that someone if they have, we have the policy, did they take advantage of it? We don't have the policy for that person to have taken advantage of. If you want someone to report certain types of conduct, if you're going to hold them accountable for that, that's one of the things of the drug policy. There are certain accountability items that are listed. If you're aware, if you're a supervisor, and you're aware of certain things going on, sure. you are obligated to report it. You know. We don't have a policy for that. So and there, and, and, and you know, and, and there's a lot of this is just informative for the employees, right? Mm -hmm. So if I think that I need surgery, what's the family medical leave policy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not this is not all something that's tied to discipline. This right. is the well, so what do I do, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, I need to notify I need to notify HR, I need to fill out this form. I, this is how many weeks I get. A, a lot of it is stuff that you know we should. You employees need just need to know. It, to know. It, I mean, it's a hand, it's policies and it's a handbook. So the handbook part of it is, it's kind of explains to employees what you know, what's expected of them and and what, you know, what benefits and that come yeah. with being. Well, the reality is, an employee handbook benefits everyone. That's not how it is. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. So, uh, how long have you been working on it? Just to give the council an idea. For well, quite a while. Right? Yeah, probably since like December. So will, um, so will it also be online? Will it or be on the website? Just yeah, it'll be on. I don't know if we would put it as something in our regular. So, so do, you you have a, do we have a separate? Uh, that's no, an interesting so website. We don't have a separate like employee website. No, and that's something that we could visit where we could uh, have an employee website where that would yeah. probably more be more appropriate, not mm -hmm. for. Yeah. On, the, on the police public. side, I think the way the corporal probably could tell you, I think that they probably in their system. It'd be something that would be in their system that they could access online. Mm -hmm. Would be my guess. Mm -hmm. uh, you know your SOPs online. Yeah, we get them to Power DMS. Yep. Yeah, it so would you all be on your phone, right? Put in Power DMS. Yeah. Well, well then every new employee would automatically get that. Yes, yes. Have to sign for it. Yes. Yes. Sign for it. Right. They'll get a hard copy. But we also had where we came from. We had an employee website. The employees could log in. Mm -hmm. We had vehicle usage policies. We had health insurance information. Um, FMLA information. We have forms on there forms that employees can get. But it's a public. It's a public. The answer is it's a public document. Yeah. It's promulgated by the mayor as part of his authority. But it's a public document. You need it. We yeah. need it. Yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. just you know. So but one thing, uh, again, the county, uh, look at the county website. Sure. Uh, but also when we when we need to look union or down need to look for different policies and such, we're told to go to the county intranet instead of the county internet. Mm -hmm. This way, you know, all that's there, the tabs are there, that you just look up and I can say, hey, George, this is what it says. Mm -hmm. So why are we, why are we meeting with you about this? 
because it says I could do it. Mm -hmm. But I have it right off of the county website. So does our, does so our, it our payroll system it's not the end. Do, do, Does our payroll system have the ability that employees can log in and get and see their earnings and see all of that stuff? Do we, do we have yeah. that? Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Can we put that large of a document on Prime Point? I think it's only a page or two. Yeah, I, I think it's. Well, I, I just don't know whether you can relate to it. Possibly. So, at its own employee, so that that's kind of like our injury. So you, you you log in to where it is, and there's a click to a link to, to employee services. Or to, yeah, to, yeah, to the handbook. Yeah, you might, you might be able to do that, so that an employee can have access to it kind of anytime because they're not going to carry, they're going to lose it, they're not going to have it with them when they really need it. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next item is a review of regular union agenda. Does anybody have any questions? No questions, but I'd like 129 taken by itself. 129. Okay, I need a motion to adopt the resolution to go into executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yep. Um, 